Hello everyone and welcome back to Unit 7 Notes. This time we are doing a video about part 2 in the note packet. This starts target 19. Target 19 says I can recognize and find major and minor arcs, semicircles, and central angles and their measures, including arc length. And so there's actually quite a bit that goes into um, target 19. As you can see, all these new vocab words uh, and plus we're going to talk about their relationships and how they create situations where obviously we can solve some problems using um, the relationship understanding that we're going to gain here. And so we're actually going to have to work through part or target 19 in two different days. Part two and part three are both about target 19. Um, so let's just get right into it. And one of the things we have to start target 19 off with is some more vocab words. So we're going to start talking about arcs and angles. Um, and you know, that deals with different things, different lines, different segments that we are going to draw inside of our circle. And what comes from where we put those lines and segments, we'll learn about um, different angle measures and arc measures on the circle. So here we go. A central angle. What a central angle is, is an angle whose vertex is at the center. And we're talking about the center of a circle. And so that would be something like this. If I go over to this circle and I draw a line coming from the center and another line drawing coming from the center, and let's say the center of this circle is P, this right here is an angle. And since that angle is formed at the center of our circle, we call it a central angle. All right. Now, some things come from this. So let's say where this line hits the edge of the circle, we call that point A, and this line we call point B. So one of the crucial things that this lesson is going to be about is what happens at the central angle, so that's like our angle P over here, compared to its intercepted arc. So let's identify intercepted arc and start talking a little bit more about this. So intercepted arc is going to be the section of the circle in between the two sides of an angle. Oop, just an angle. So if we look at angle P, for instance, that's the only angle we can see in this circle. So the intercepted arc based on angle P is the section of the circle in between the two sides of the angle. Now, an arc is always on the edge of a circle. And so the intercepted arc we're talking about here is this part of the circle that's between A and B, right? A and B are the sides of this angle, and our intercepted arc is the circle in between those two sides, right? And so that's from A to B. And so the first thing we want to talk about here, and we're going to bring it back to the central angle box, is that the central angle measure equals the intercepted arc measure. And I'm going to box this because this is going to be very important today and in the future. The central angle measure equals the intercepted arc measure. So one thing we should know about circles is circles measure 360 degrees in total. So to go all the way around the circle, it is 360 degrees. So if I like did this, right, and went all the way around, that would be 360 total degrees. Now, one thing we want to talk about as far as central angles and intercepted arcs are concerned is they equal each other. So let's say this angle is a 60 degree angle, then my green intercepted arc would also be 60 degrees. It would be 60 degrees out of the whole 360, right? It's like a 60 degree chunk of the whole circle. Now, central angles and intercepted arcs always equal each other. So let's say it wasn't 60. Let's say it was 45. Well, this arc would be 45 as well. And so we've got to know that. 
this box right here, the angle measure equals the arc measure at a central angle. That is so, so important. All right. And then also this piece of information, just an aside, circles measure 360 in total. I'm guessing you already know that, but we need to keep that in mind. All right. Now I am going to erase the 45 and the 45 because I don't know if that's true or not for this circle. I was just trying to show you a little bit more specific about how they equal each other. You know, it doesn't really matter what they are. It's just if one is one number, the other one's that same number. But again, we don't know numbers in this problem, so I'm not going to leave them there. But that concept is something we're going to have to figure out. So here's what I want to do, Mark, right? Where uh, P is creating an angle here, that is our central angle. That's what a central angle will look like. And in green between A and B, that is our intercepted arc, right? Intercepted arc, the arc in between the sides of the angle. So let's talk about a couple more things revolving, involving arcs. So a minor arc is less than 180 degrees, which is less than half a circle, right? If a whole circle is 360, then half of a circle is 180. So a minor arc is simply just a part of the circle, a section of the circle that is less than 180 degrees. We name minor arcs named with two letters, or I shouldn't even say letters, I should say points, named with two points. And so in this example, two points, our minor arc is the green uh, squiggly line I made there. And so our minor arc is going to be AB. That's how we write it. And then an arc symbol. We literally draw an arc above. And so that intercepted arc we have over there, it's also called, so it's an intercepted arc and a minor arc. Because that arc is definitely less than half of our circle. And since it's less than half our circle, it's less than 180 degrees. And any arc that is less than 180 degrees is considered a minor arc. And again, we name them with two points. And we put the arc symbol above it. Now, a major arc is very similar. But a major arc is more than 180 degrees. So it is more than half a circle and major arcs are named with three points three points and so i actually have to like add a point to the other side of this circle i'm going to call this point x and so then if i if i work with a b and x but i go the other way right a b from a to b i'm going to recolor in that squiggly that's the minor arc, but from A to X to B, that would be going in reverse, right? The long way, A, then X, then B, that's a major arc. And so that's how we would name it with three points. We would basically say it in the order of we want you to go around the circle. And so let's say our major arc starts at A, but then we need to go to X next, so A, X. And then from X, we're going to B. So AXB, again, named with three points. And then we're putting the arc symbol on top of it. So minor arcs are just named with two. It's like the short way around the circle. And major arcs are named with three points. And so you just follow those letters, go from the start one to the middle one to the end one, and that'll highlight your major arc. Finally, our semicircle. Semicircle is exactly 180 degrees. So it's equal to half the circle. And it is always formed by a diameter because diameters cut the circle in half. And so they split the circle into two 180-degree chunks, which two 180-degree chunks equal 360 in total, as it should. And we name 
semicircles with three points as well. Three points. So minor arcs just get two points, arc AB. Major arcs get three points, arc AXB. Semicircles also get three points. And what I really just want to emphasize to you is you're just kind of following the letters in order, right? For minor arcs, A, B, go from A directly to B. For major arc, the one we said was A, X, B, go from A to X to B. And we don't have a picture of a semicircle here, but it's just half the circle. Down here, that would be like from A to F to B, right? Because A, B is a diameter. It's cutting that circle in half. So from A to F to B, that arc is going to be 180 degrees, so it's a semicircle. Now, I'm going to erase all that because we're going to do, obviously, a little bit different with this problem. Um, those are our vocab words we're going to need to be comfortable with. Let's start answering some problems with them. So in this one, we just want to look at the, we want to practice following the letters and calling things major arcs, minor arcs, or semicircles, right? So minor arc, major arc, semicircle. Remember, minor arcs need two letters. Major and semis need three. And so we already know which ones are minor. Right? A, E, and F, A, and F, B all have to be minor because they only have two letters in them. And minor arcs are the only ones we name with two letters. So we can even fill that one in quickly. And I'll kind of highlight it on our circle to show you. Let's look at A, E, right? From A to E. We just skip D, just go from A to E, and that is definitely less than half of our circle. Perfect. Now let's look at FA. FA right there, definitely less than half the circle. Let's look at FB. Once again, definitely less than half the circle, right? All right. Now the three letter ones are the ones we have to distinguish between major and semi circles. And so let's follow the letters. Um, actually, I'll make it bigger again. So FDE means go from F to D to E. So F to D to E. And what you should see is that connects the endpoints of our diameter. That's the line FE in the middle, diameter, it's splitting that circle in half. And FDE brings us from one side of that diameter to the other. And so this is what a semicircle looks like semicircle all right let's keep moving bdf again follow the letters from b to d to f and so that would be from b to d to f this time that's definitely more than half of the circle and so when it's more than half the circle that is a major arc and so one more a, E, B, A to E to B. That is another semicircle because if you follow A to B, right, it goes through the center. So that's a diameter. Diameter split our circle in half. And so each half of that thing has to be 180 degrees. It's exactly 180. So it is a semicircle. All right. Let's keep moving on. Actually, you know what? I think this video is going to run out of time in a second. And so I'm just going to leave it at there. And I'm going to make a second part just to finish up this last section of um, part two here. Now we're going to start doing work with central angles and arc measures. The one thing I want you to remember, and I'm going to write it up top. Remember, central angle. equals intercepted arc. And so I want that up top. I'm going to box it, and we are going to use that in just a second.